What's up, everybody? And welcome to season seven of the Sea Jack Reviews, the final season. I'm your host, Sea Jack. Today, I decided to give you guys something special. Today is going to be the binge episode, where I'm going to share with you every single episode and show I've watched on media stream so far. So, without any delay, let's get this party started. Hey guys, so um, welcome back. So I decided to make this video in response to what do you be watching on Media Stream CJ when you're not doing your wonderful channel and your random reviews and all your networks that's on CJack Productions, throwing up some advertisement there. That is a very good question. So I'm deciding to share my personal uh, streaming services and favorite shows with you guys today in this binge episode, as I call it. Welcome to episode one, by the way. All right, so. For starters, let's start with Netflix. All right, what I've just got through watching was a magnificent, magnificent, underrated uh, series so far. That is called The Squid Games. Now, The Squid Games, don't let the title fool you. And I usually watch Korean films anyway because of the superior writing involved, but this was just impressive to me. Although, I will warn you, this is your only spoiler for me, that the ending was very anticlimactic to me and it was well thought out but it was predictable you know but the ride is worth it i strongly recommend it i believe it's only a short 12 or 10 episodes but it was a really good uh series and just for the record my favorite character is number 218 but you'll find out what that means if you watch the series so next up, another for one of my favorite shows on Netflix, we're starting with Netflix, is a little more heartwarming. Um, it's, called, it's called Love on the Spectrum. It's pretty much dating. Dating is hard enough, but what if you're dating with autism or certain conditions that you have of your psyche? And it's very heartwarming. You know, I was um, introduced to this series by my honey bunny and uh, it, it was really good. I it, the, the series, personally, I'm upset. The only thing that I'm very upset about this series is the fact that it only has combined maybe 12 episodes. There's two seasons, but it's six episodes each. But I strongly recommend it if you want something heartwarming and inspiring and very interesting to watch. I strongly recommend that you check out The Spectrum. That was really good, too. Next up, we have... Also, that just recently dropped, Oak Studios. It's, to me, it's like a knockoff of, it's a knockoff of um, Black Mirror meets pretty much uh, I Love um, love Death and Robots. If you haven't seen either one of those, check it out. Um, it's on Netflix, I believe. If not, ask somebody. And it's pretty much random stories of the studio company with random um, project ideas. So Gonia Weaver starts it off in the very first episode, which was really amazing, by the way. Again, Oat Studios. I strongly recommend you guys check that out. I watched all of it last night. Now, mind you, all the shows that I'm naming right now, I literally binged under a week or less. So I recommend you guys check that out. And also the stuff that just recently dropped is a legendary series I like to recommend called Baki, Son of the Ogre. It's based upon the legendary series of Baki the Grappler, which came out in 1994 or 95, I believe. I Hell, I still got the original box set in my house. And um, it's his long-term quest to become stronger to face his father, Yujiro Hanma, a.k.a. the Ogre, which is why his title is called Son of the Ogre. And uh, I did a review on his last season review. Check it out under my playlist, uh, my Baki review. In fact, I'm actually working on a second part. It did so well. I'm working on a second part of that with the latest Son of the Yoga uh, review. But this is on Netflix right now. It recently dropped. So I recommend you guys check that out. This last on Netflix, but not least, is my all-time favorite, F is in Family. 
starring uh, the voice acting of Bill Burr himself, the famous comedian. The guy is fucking hilarious. And he's, yes, and F is in family is the reason why there's an F there. If you don't check it out, he'll push you through a wall, running gag there. I not only binge watch this, but I watch it again and again constantly when I want to laugh. It came out a while back, I believe in 2015 or 16. It's pretty old, but it still holds up its clout. So I recommend you guys check that out. Uh, it's based upon his young family back in the day, um, in the 1970s, when he was up and coming growing up. So it's, it's a really good comedy. So let's take a break for a minute to talk about what's going on in the channel. I got to do shameless plugs. You guys know me by now. So my new series called Convos and Crafts just dropped. The first three episodes have already been um, showing weekly on C Jack Productions. I'm on episode three right now. I just got done interviewing the magnificent muse Neon Carter. And what the show premise is about is pretty much artists right here locally in my town in Las Vegas who have crafts and interests of their own. Only one of them, actually two of them actually, don't reside here, but they are well respected in my light that I had to interview them. So check that out. Um, it's in the playlist. Uh, just click on my YouTube channel, go, uh, scroll to the right, I believe, and look for the playlist and you will see exactly what that entitles and uh check that out also i'm bringing back a legendary series i thought it did really well <laughs> sorry i thought it did really well was uh friday fights of fury but i'm calling it friday fights of fury 2. this time i'm doing the best animated fights of all time versus live action korean films i had a lot of you know copyright issues with that so i'm attacking it from a different approach but i'm teaming up again with my boy black joe with his legendary series he had so much fun, he wants it back. I was like, absolutely, what am I doing right now? So uh, check those two series out, both under my playlist, under C Jack Productions on YouTube. Now, let's skip to Hulu. I don't usually watch Hulu or binge watch that much off of there, but there is uh, one show that caught my interest on Hulu, The Handmaid's Tale. This was recommended by my boss uh, in the school district, um, what well, was with the school district. She's not, I'm not with them right now, but. And uh, it's based upon the novel. It's really good. It's about, if you guys haven't seen it, it's basically about women's rights being completely stripped and pretty much brought back in the 19th, 19, not even 19, like the 15th century or 16th century where women's opinions are undermined by men and also um, overshadowed and blindly following by God. No, no question against that. If that's how you feel, that's you. But it's really stagnant how it was um, produced and interpreted and just watch it. It was really good. Just watch it. It was mind blowing. You know, it gives you perspective of how our personal rights can be violated at any given moment. But that's all, you know, the plugs I'm going to give on that. I don't give too much away. Next up on another streaming service, um, on Amazon Prime is Invincible. I never heard of this dude until literally last year when the first season was finished. I know the new season is up and coming, but I am also tell you about this series now unless you've been living on a rock, God knows I was. It is absolutely magnificent. It's very realistic, extremely gory, so brace yourselves, and the dialogue was impressive, and it has at least 70% of the cast from The Walking Dead as voice actors. Not to mention Joan Jameson, you know, who plays Spider-Man and everything he does. So uh, I strongly recommend that. Um, it's really good. It's very good. So check that out. And also on Amazon Prime is a legendary series even older than that called The Boys. The series dropped in 2019. My boy James Archibald hooked me up to it. It's really good. I recommend it. Um, they're definitely going to have to have another season of this. There's three already. I believe it's three. Um... No, they're working on season three, I believe. Yeah, let me, if I'm wrong, just correct me on the bottom. But anywho, The Boys is magnificent. I strongly recommend you guys check that out as well. And uh, that's all for the Amazon's uh, recommendation. Now, the show that I binge watched that I absolutely had a tearjerker outside of the spectrum. And uh, this is the reason why I'm wearing this shirt is Picard. Picard was recommended by my little friend Diana Soto. Diana, if you're watching, thanks for the support. Um, it's Picard pretty much retired 
Obviously, he became Admiral from the, from the um, Star Trek uh, franchise from Starfleet. And he's just having his own life adventures right now as a retired Admiral um, with Starfleet. But he's brought out of retirement due to a circumstance that commands his immediate attention. I'm trying to think this through without giving spoilers. It's really good. If you have not watched it yet, they're working on a season two. So check that out for all you Trekkies out there. Whew. Now we're switching to Disney Plus. What's the binge right now? Now, mind you, 90% of these shows I've watched already, and if not already, are coming out, and I recommend. If you guys like the content so far, don't forget to hit that share, comment, subscribe. Share, comment, subscribe. Share, comment, subscribe. Um, Star Wars Visions. I finished this almost in two days. It's pretty much Love, Death, and Robots answer, but by Disney. Um... It's pretty much many Star Wars films that were animated through different animation studios. A lot of companies are doing this now. It must be a trend. And I recommend this because the first episode from Jump draws your attention. And it pretty much waters down after each every other episode. I wonder if that's a thing. I don't know. But I strongly recommend this. It was really good. And there's too many stories to even individually negate. But it's behind Disney+. Plus. It's not bad. I recommend it. So... Um, also on Disney Plus, we're on Disney Plus platform, the legendary series What If, which finally finished. It was good. It was good. I liked it, but my boy James Archibald and I also agree that they, um, here's your only spoiler, they treated Tony Stark like crap. Now, in, in all the series, that's all you get from me, and you'll see why. Why, in my opinion, um that they did, in my opinion. Obviously, Disney couldn't afford to hire back Robert Downey Jr. They weren't paying him what he was worth, so they decided, like, okay, whatever. They just kept him out of the loop by making him a running gag. I think that's a little biased and a little spiteful on Disney's part. That's just your boy's opinion. But, yes, I strongly recommend you check that out. Shows like that in Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki, all of those. All the Marvel platforms are good. Hell, even Hawkeye is around the corner. So don't forget to check that out. And back to Disney Plus as well. Um... I'm a Star Wars fan, but I always like to watch more importantly. Well, first of all, I'm a Trekkie first and foremost, but as a Star Wars fan, I can give respect, respect is due. The Bad Batch. I don't usually watch Star Wars content that much, but this series, I always root for the underdog. This series is really, really good, and I recommend it, strongly recommend it. It takes place literally right after Clone Wars. Remember the old school Clone Wars series, right? Yeah, and it's about the drone, uh, the clones, um, spin off of their perspective what happened during the great portrayal of Order 66. So, um, check that out. And, uh, I'm trying to think. Whew. And that's all I got for you guys. So, um, yeah, tell me what you think and what you guys have been binge watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this so far. Decided to put it together as episode one of season seven. And I will be following this final season of the Random Reviews. That's right, I'm retiring this series to make more effort and time soon for um, my newest project, Combos and Crafts. Again, if you're just now tuning in, check that out. Hit that share, comment, subscribe button. Um, before you guys leave, I have one last recommendation that I know that's going to be good on HBO Max. Um, Justice League Phantom, excuse me, Young, wow, butchered that. Young Justice Phantoms. If you guys loved Young Justice already, the new season's about to drop very, very soon. Uh, to my knowledge, they haven't dropped it yet. By the time this video comes out, I'm sure people will be doing their homework. Please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, it's not the only show that HBO Max has to offer. There's also Harley Quinn. I've not only binged that, but I watched it twice. So I recommend that as well. HBO Max has some good shows there. I tried to watch... Um, this is my opinion. I tried to watch, um, oh, what's it called? Shoot. Doom Patrol. It was written really well. It just didn't catch my spark. So I couldn't do that along with Teen Titans. So that's what HBO Max has to offer as far as DC content. Well, that's all I got for right now. And, uh, welcome to my first and final season of season seven. No, first and final season. Wow. Welcome to my seventh and final season of the Random Reviews. Um, don't forget to hit that share, comment, subscribe. I'm your boy, C-Jack. Peace.